The U.S. budget faces a round of indiscriminate and severe cuts. Across the board cuts that hurt our economy and jeopardize our families. The effects of the sequester are broad and far-reaching. Make no mistake, these, cut, these cuts aren't just fodder for newspaper headlines. They are real, they are deep, and they will hurt. The sequester will undermine our growing, but still fragile, economic recovery. And here we are again with an all-too-familiar manufactured crisis poised to strike our economy with another self-inflicted wound. But make no mistake, these cuts will be unimaginable to people across the country. Should sequestration take effect, my state of New Jersey will lose almost $12 million in funding for primary and secondary education, putting around 160 teachers and their aides at risk. The sequester is not fair to the children and families in my district. It is not about trimming fat. These automatic budget cuts will literally take the food out of the mouths of hungry mothers and children, 600,000 of them. Children deserve better from their members of Congress. We cannot afford to cut investment in programs that prepare our students for the 21st century economy. The effect of sequestration on our borders will be felt especially hard in my western New York community, home to four crossings on the northern border. In addition, 11,000 civilian employees at Fort Bliss in El Paso will be furloughed for 22 days. These are the middle class Americans who care for our wounded warriors when they return from war and make our military base run efficiently. House Republicans don't care about the harm it will cause to our working families, our seniors, our children, our military, especially our military. The men and women who feed, instruct, protect our nation's next generation of military leaders shouldn't lose their jobs because this Congress can't do ours. I have a list of cuts and how it's going to affect from children to uh, senior citizens to FAA. The time for finger pointing and assigning blame is over. Inaction should not be an option. The sequester and its irresponsible, indiscriminate, across-the-board spending cuts is the exact opposite of what we need to be doing right now to grow our economy. Let's prove to San Diego and the American people that Congress is not broken. We can and should vote to remove the self-inflicted threat. And irresponsible, across-the-board spending cuts are not a real solution. Every time the House of Representatives wants to pass some meaningful legislation, we're forced to go through this pattern where our citizens are put through weeks of drama on pins and needles wondering what will happen. H.R. 699, of which I'm a co-sponsor, would replace this meat cleaver method of budgeting with a balanced approach. We must have revenue, and yes, we must have spending responsibility, but we cannot undermine the American people. Let's uh, keep fighting to stop the Swiss sequestration and let's get our fiscal house in order in this country in a balanced way. It's time for Congress to set aside partisanship. We need to compromise. We cannot afford to wait a moment longer. We still have time to stop this. Hard-working families everywhere are counting on it. I ask unanimous consent to bring up H.R. 699, a balanced bill to replace the sequester with spending cuts and revenue. The only responsible way forward is for Republicans and Democrats to work together to achieve a balanced solution to deficits that can turn off the sequestration.